Hello students and uh, welcome to chapter 5. In this chapter we're going to be looking at um, international trade and different theories. So let's go into some of this information here. The uh, main premise of this chapter is that free trade is beneficial. Trade is good. And uh, we will discuss other drawbacks to trade in later chapters, and perhaps why governments and some nations want to restrict trade. But for this chapter, uh, we're looking at various trade theories and the benefit it gives to uh, not only the citizens and the nation, but um, uh, the global economy as well. Uh, international trade allows countries to specialize in the manufacture and export of products and services that it can produce efficiently and to import products and services that can be produced more efficiently in other countries. Um, it has shaped, um, international trade theory has shaped the economic policy of many nations. As it says for the past 50 years, it has helped shape the European Union, which is the world's largest free trade zone. Um, so this chapter attempts to address why certain trade patterns exist. Some are fairly easy to explain, and we'll get into this more so later on, but um, we understand that Saudi Arabia exports oil, Ghana exports cocoa, Brazil exports coffee. But the question is, those are easy answers, but the more difficult question, um, and this is um, some of the premises for the different trade theories is that they try to explain why, for example, does Switzerland export chemicals, pharmaceuticals, watches, and jewelry? Uh, why does Japan, for example, export automobiles, consumer electronics, and machine tools? So the various trade theories in this chapter will attempt to explain and answer those questions. Oops, let's go back. Adam Smith, um, main guy, he uh, um, came up with the um, theory of absolute advantage, and we'll discuss the absolute advantage in later slides as well. But he was the first to explain why, in the uh, mid 1700s, why unrestricted free trade was beneficial to a country. Uh, and as I said more later, uh, with his theory of absolute advantage. Um, in 1776, Adam Smith attacked the prevailing theory, which was a mercantilism approach, and we'll discuss more in later slides as well. But, you know, that theory or approach viewed trade as a zero-sum game in terms of if I win, you lose, if you win, I lose, and argued that countries uh, differ in their ability to produce goods efficiently and that a country has an absolute advantage in the production of a product when it is more um, efficient than any other country in producing it. According to Smith, this is what he argued, countries should specialize in the production of goods for which they have that advantage and then trade for those goods in which other countries have an advantage. Producing more efficiently means using fewer inputs or producing higher yields or more outputs. So that's what we mean by uh, production efficiency, because so, um, we'll be using that term quite a bit. So you are either using fewer inputs or you are producing more outputs, higher yields than the same number of inputs. Um, so a quick overview of the trade theories, um, building on Smith's work. Our additional theories, one by David Ricardo, uh, comparative advantage, and then his work was refined by Heckscher and uh, Olin, um, giving us the Heckscher Olin theory. Um, but David Ricardo um, asked what happens, say, uh, when one country has an absolute advantage in the production of all goods. Because Smith's work is basically clear if you have the production, the absolute advantage in production of a good or one product, um, you're able to produce it more efficiently. You should produce that product and trade for other products. Ricardo says, well, what happens if you have that absolute advantage 
in the production of all goods. So if that country does, there's really no need to trade, he would argue, because that country is able to produce all goods that they need more efficiently than other nations. The theory of comparative advantage states that countries should specialize in the production of those goods they produce most efficiently. So that's the key, that they produce most efficiently. So looking at all the products you produce in a nation, which ones are you most efficient at producing? You focus on those. And then you buy goods that they produce less efficiently, even if it is still more efficient than what other nations can do. But you still, you buy goods that um, you produce less efficiently from other countries. This brings up the concept of opportunity cost. So a country needs to determine what it is most efficient at producing and then trade for those other goods. An example that helps us illustrate the difference between absolute advantage and comparative advantage is a, is a really basic one. Say we have two people. We have Michael Jordan, the famer, uh, former NBA player. Um, and we have Joe. He's just a regular Joe. Um, so Michael Jordan... He, he has to decide on what two options or what two tasks he needs to complete uh, in a specific day. Of course, he can't uh, do those in, on any other days, just to keep this example really basic. So he can paint his house. And because he's a big guy, he can paint his house in eight hours. Or he can do a TV commercial and earn $50,000 for that, uh, that commercial. Uh, regular Joe... He has two options as well. He can paint a house. He can paint Michael Jordan's house in 10 hours. He's not as tall, so he needs a ladder. Takes him more time. And he will earn $200. Or he can go to work at McDonald's and earn $100. Michael Jordan, in this example, is more efficient at both options. Takes him less time to paint the house, and he can earn more money um, by going outside the house. But good old Joe, he has a comparative advantage in painting the house. He would only have to forego working at McDonald's for $100. Uh, if Michael Jordan decided to paint his house because he, he is more efficient at it, he would have to forego doing a TV commercial and the $50,000 that he would earn. So that is a greater cost for him to paint his house. In this example, it would be better for Michael Jordan to do the commercial, earn $50,000, and let Joe paint his house, even though it would take more time. Um, as we've said, the uh, we need to specialize free trade, the gains of free trade, because um, in, um, countries are able to specialize. Um, more on the hector olin theory in later slides, but this last point here, uh, many Canadians believe that to help save Canadian jobs from foreign competition, Canadian consumers should buy products produced in Canada by Canadian companies whenever possible. So we have that by Canadian process. Um, this chapter, however, argues that Perhaps we as consumers would be supporting a Canadian industry that should um, be dismissed. Should We should forego that industry in order to put the, those resources um, in that industry into more effective or more efficient resources or more efficient industries. So that's what uh, that last point is getting at, um, is that... Uh, we know we need to focus on industries that we are most efficient at. And if we're not, then we're using some resources not, um, not as efficiently. The other point that this would bring up is, uh, this is something we brought up in Chapter 1, I believe, where how do we define a Canadian company? What is a Canadian company? Is it headquartered here? Um, or is it, um, you know, because a company could be headquartered here, but it may be foreign-owned. Um, or is it a company that uh, manufactures here, workers here, but it is actually owned elsewhere? 
So the whole definition or process of finding a true Canadian company may be more difficult than, than it seems. Um, so we've, we've discussed that earlier. So this is what trade theories attempt to, um, to answer. Um, Brazil, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, China, various, there's, um, obvious reasons why they would be exporting, um, those products. It's, Difficult to ascertain why some countries, like Switzerland, exports watches, for example, or chemicals or pharmaceuticals, as we've, as we pointed out. Some aspects of the trade pattern are difficult to understand, leading to a new trade theory. Um, this one we'll discuss uh, later as well, but basically um, countries should specialize in the production and export of particular products not because of underlying differences in factor endowments, and we'll get to that, but because it's because certain industries, the world market can only support a limited number. And we'll talk about um, economies of scale. Why are there only a few airline manufacturer manufacturers in the world? Why is there only a few computer software manufacturers in the world as well? Um, goes to reason that because of economies of scale and the large capital investment it takes in those industries, that uh, not every country can have their own airline manufacturer or computer software um, just because of the the numbers and also what would happen for example with computer software if each nation had their own computer software and programs um, that could make it very difficult to communicate electronically if uh, every nation had their own software different software and different programs so we'll talk about mercantilism, um, perhaps in the next section of this uh, Chapter 5 video.